What's up guys, today I'm going step by step through the process of designing your own super secure bunker in Fallout 4. I've shown you a lot of the things that I've wired, but today I'm going through an unplanned spontaneous build and together we'll come up with something that's super safe so that when an attack like this happens, we'll be ready. What's up guys, Dark Dally here and today I'm back at my scrap heap at Starlight Drive-In, but only for a moment because today we're going to do something different. I'm going to go to a completely new settlement that this character has never been to, clear it out, and build from the ground up a little basic security thing. You guys know I love doing wiring and electricity and security and all that kind of stuff. And I've shown you some really complicated systems, like the system I have installed here. If you didn't see it, a link to the last my, my, my last video where I showed this will be in the description below, and most likely at the end of this video in the upper left-hand corner of the screen as well. This place is a very complicated security system with actually so many wires that it stopped letting me place them, and I had to force the game to allow me to place wires. So I, want, I don't want to do something that complicated, but what I'm going to do is... I'm going to start from the ground up and just show you step by step how to do just like a basic setup. Not that, you know, I'm sure you guys know how to wire stuff, but I'm going to show you how I do it. And I have no plans for what I'm going to do. I'm just going to wire it and see how it goes. And hopefully um, show you some of my thought process and how I do things. And maybe it'll just help create some more uh, creative security systems and door systems and whatnot. Let's, let's find out, guys. So first things first, let's, um, I should have a quest somewhere for a settlement here. Raider Tribbles in Nordhagen Beach. You know, I'm not sure I've ever even built there. All right, so we're going to go do that. Where are we going? We are going down there. So we're going to have to fast travel to Fort Strong and hoof it. All right, guys, so let's head down there and see how this goes. This should be this should be fun. I'm just going to build a small, simple thing. I'm going to try to keep it PS4 friendly because I know a lot of my viewers are on PS4. So I'm going to try to keep it as friendly as possible for, for you guys, although I'm, I may be using some mods and stuff that you can't use. All the wiring you know, is universal. So let's go ahead and fast travel to Fort Strong and run up to Nordhagen Beach and see what we got. Okay, so here we are. I'm sure they're going to have some little task for us. Uh, of course, I will spare you that. Yes, I'm here to help. What's going on? There's a group of raiders that won't leave us alone. It's the Raiders, East City Downs, that's easy enough. I'm going to handle that, and then I'll come back to you guys right after that. We'll start building here. I just want to show you, you know, like, totally uh, built up from scratch. Don't worry. Exactly. Uh, the whole process. I think it'll be fun. I want to do a live wiring build where I actually don't know what I'm doing ahead of time. I think that'll be real fun. So, guys, I'll be right back. All right, so that went pretty smoothly. Now let's go ahead and talk to the guy here and finish our quest and start building. Now I think about it, actually, I have built here. Built here a few times. I don't know why I was... what I was thinking. Yeah, I did have luck. Oh. I took care of those raiders for you. Okay. So, yes, well, we took care of the raiders. I've heard in a long time. By the way, All right. we've talked about it. We decided to support the men and men. I think it's worth Let's see. Yep, yep, yep. All right, I think we can build here now. All right, so we can build. Let's go ahead, first of all, top out of this tin can. It helped move the quest along, but it's not going to do us any service here trying to build, that's for sure. So let's hop out here. Now, I think because I have um, a mod, I believe it's called, I, I keep calling it large settlement raids. I think it's called bigger raids, something like that. It's in my load order, which of course is linked in the description below. Because of this mod that gives me larger raids, I... Every time I open up a new settlement, I always want to come and... Oh, let's leave the plans. I always want to come and, and start off with um, some kind of place I can hide because I found that settlements that are undeveloped, you know, love to get raided. So usually as soon as I unlock a settlement, the first thing I do is I come and um, build a bunker kind of thing with a fast travel target in it so that if it gets attacked, you know, before I get a chance to actually build there... I can go and, yeah, hide in the bunker and take down the guys because with this mod there can be like 40 or 50 guys. It's, there can be, not always, you know. All right, so first thing, let's get, us a, let's get us a flat platform because there is not much for flat ground here. So we're just going to link it over to uh, Oberlin. Who cares? Yes. Okay. Okay, and now we have stuff to build with, so let's go ahead and do this. All right, I'm just going to do, like, some concrete foundations. Let's use, uh, I like these, personally. Let's build with these. 
We're going to build us a little bunker here with a fast travel target in it, so that if, while I'm out gallivanting around doing other things, this place does come under attack, I will have a place to travel to dispatch of the raiders. I don't know how big a platform we're going to need, so... Now, the pieces, um, what, what should we use? I think there are some bunker pieces I have. Now, depending on what mods you have and what system you're on, you may have different pieces. I think I'm going to go ahead and build with, um... There is bunker pieces here in Homemaker. I don't know what all PlayStation 4 has now. I know that, you know, they've got USO and uh, Settlement Supplies Expanded and Workshop Items, and I'm not sure what all is included in those now, but these pieces are really nice. Definitely something you could find on any system. They're, these are all in-game assets. It's just that being on PC, these are going to snap for me. Okay, I think I got that pretty straight. So we're just going to place it like here. There's a gap there, but as you can see, you know, these pieces like this, they don't look good from the side, but once you make a full enclosure, it will, uh, it'll look good. It'll look good. Good enough for what we're doing. Let's go ahead. Let's get, uh, how much room do we have? I think we have a little corner. We have some, like, rounded corner pieces here, I think. Like, uh, I know we do. There we go. That's what I want. Yeah, I want one of these. We're just going to make this small and simple. So we're going to put that piece there. We're going to put that piece there. Now, I doubt we're going to get attacked by anything over here. So we're pretty safe to just wall that side off, to be quite honest. So let's just wall this side off. No need to make it bigger than we need. Let's put some, yeah, let's put this kind of corner piece here. Doubtful we'll be getting it. Actually, we could get attacked from over there. I don't know where the spawn points are here. So let's put some windows out on this side. Just in case we get attacked there, we want to be able to fend on that side. And let's go ahead and get us another one of these corner pieces. And then we're definitely going to want... I mean, we want windows in at least two sides, right? So, you know, build, we're building a defensive bunker. So let's go ahead and do that. Now let's get us the center pieces we need to fill in our bunker. There we go. I finally got that place. I just had to remove the door, so... Let's put our door back. So we got a door and window on one side, and then we got windows on two other sides. Okay. So all we did was just took some prefab shit, we slapped it together, we got us a nice little, uh, little building here. We definitely need some kind of entrance to it, so let's, uh, let's take care of that. And actually, I know a great place, as long as I'm in Homemaker. Let's go over here and uh, let's go to somewhere here. We have some interesting stairs, which I've never used, and... No, no, scratch that. I've used these. Are these going to snap? Where are they snapping to? I don't think that's going to work, but we'll try it. Alright, doesn't have to be perfect. Just has to get us up into the bunker. Very nice. Okay. Now this is just a matter of... Um, Let's get some, we need some doors up on these windows, because we're going to put a fast travel target in here, so we can travel here, be safe, and we want to be able to lock this down, and that's a lot of what I'm doing here, is an electrical system in this place. We want to be able to lock this place down, and defend while we, while we build, in case we get attacked. So we can use whatever kind of doors we want, so let's go pick us some doors, I'm just going to stay here in Homemaker, though I do have settlement objects expanded. I'm a big fan of the doors that are available here. There's a, a pretty good variety of doors. There's a bunker door, and this is a bunker, right? So where's that bunker door at? There it is. So we're going to use this. Which way is it going to open? I think that'll work for us. Let's see. Ah. Yeah, that works. That's fine. No worries there. Now, of course, I'm going to be using the mod Power Doors, Remote Control and Lock which will allow me to automate this to an electrical system. If you were on a PS4 or something that you didn't have access to a mod like that, you would want to use a power door. You'd want to instead put a power door there, and that'd be as simple as... I mean, I don't know if you guys have these pieces to build with on PS4 or not. I, I, no need to dwell on that too long, but you could just use Place Anywhere, slap, an, you know, slap a power door over these windows. I want to do something a little more creative. Okay, so... Now, from my experience, I may have some troubles working this. Uh, the power door's remote control and lock can be a little... A little finicky sometimes. Let's get an adapter for this. So now we'll be able to remote control this. Let's go ahead and get as a generator. This is what I do when I'm building a place, and I don't know, for all I know, I could be attacked right now, however unlikely that is. I want to go ahead and get a power door up, get a genie up, hook them together, and now I know 
but I can build from within here and be safe, although I do want to get these windows covered. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and do that. Now, we, now that we have our door working, we got our little power adapter linked up to it, so we can't open it there. We can only open it with the generator. Of course, we'll have an entire switch system, but I want to show you guys how I do the wiring. So that's what we're doing. Now we need some cool doors for these windows. What to use? The choices are endless. We could use uh, separate power doors over these, but personally, I don't want to have too many switches in here. Also, since each power door takes up one power, I'd rather just have one door for each of these if I could. I'll probably have to build two generators, but I don't want to have a whole slew of generators in here. Now, of course, I could put the generators outside, but then that'd be a whole other thing. You could put them outside, yes, but you would want to protect them. Because raiders always go for your resources at some point during the raid, they will destroy your generators. And if you're locked in here with no access to your generators, they destroy them, you're going to lose power, this whole place is going to lock down, and then you're helpless. So we don't want that. So we want to put our generators inside, is what I'm saying. As far as doors, or shutters, whatever for these windows, as you know, whatever the case may be, I think I want to try something different. Let's find us an interesting door. It's always fun to look through these mods and see what kind of doors you can find and what kinds of things you can do with them, you know? Yes, here we go. This might just fit over both of our uh, over both of our windows. I think it will. And it'll give us a really cool look. Now this might not be lined up perfect. I'm not necessarily gonna take the time to line all this stuff up perfect. So I wanna make this video fairly short. Oh, that looks good though. That said, if you're gonna do something like this and you're gonna use that's not centered. And you're going to use power doors, remote control unlock. Don't place the door and then open it to see if it'll work. If I were to open this, it'll go up and then I won't be able to close it again. I mean, it just might be a thing. It's not really a thing, but it could be a thing. Just fair warning. You don't, don't you know, put a door inside of a wall, open it to, to test it and then lose it. Of course, I could always just click up there. This is not quite centered. So we're going to center this a little better. There we go. That's good. All right, let's do another one of those over here. That worked really well. So let's just do another one of these. I dig it. Of course, we want to check it from the outside and make sure it looks good from out there. Um, I think that one's actually centered. I mean, close enough for government work, right? Let's go ahead and let's go out here and check these out. Okay. It, there's gaps that are going to appear there. Eh, well, this door ain't perfect. This door is much like these bunker walls. When you look at it from the side, it's it's uh, you know it's like invisible. It doesn't have a side texture. But I don't think you can shoot through that. I was wrong. Well, let's just pretend this is a door that does cover the entire window. Okay, it looked good from the inside. It looks good from out here, except for uh, except for the little discrepancies there. Let's just pretend I used, you know, different doors. So I guess maybe the trailer door isn't the best one to use. It looks so cool from in here, though, doesn't it? Let's continue on with this. Let's also get us some light in here. We definitely need some light. So let's go. Let's go grab us. Because um, this is primarily wiring here. I don't need to show you guys how to build. I just want to show you guys how I do some of my wiring, at least how the uh, process goes. So let's just get us a little conduit just so we can wire up a light. What's a good... Oh, Actually, this right here will light the entire place like freaking daylight. Okay, now we can see perfectly fine. So we got these windows covered. We need to cover this door with something. I want something slidey, but something small. A sliding door would probably clip through because that wall space is so small. Let's see what we can do. Just find something, anything. I could just put any kind of door as a shutter, but uh, what am I doing? Structures? Yeah. Oh, we were already on doors. There we go. Let's try maybe uh, diner door, elevator door. Some of these can be a little picky whether or not they want to work. Here are sliding doors. Here's some sliding doors. Um, let's make sure it slides the right way. I think that'll work. I think we can cl close that in the wall. That'll work. So let's go ahead and pop this in there. Just nice and basic like. So now let's go ahead and now let's hope, let's get these wired up and hope that the uh, our conduits connect correctly. 
And let's go ahead. We're going to need a second generator, I think. Let's just go ahead and place one anyway. And I'll use this as my test generator to make sure that these doors work. When I build, when I wire stuff, I build a lot of these along the way to test little things as I go to make sure one particular thing is going to work. Let's put a power door adapter right here. Now, this, you know, it should operate the nearest door to it, although sometimes I've found them not doing that. There we go. Okay, so we know that one works. That's going to look good. Now let's go ahead and get one of these over here. And let's move you here. Oh, that does look cool. That looks pretty tight. All right, now let's get one last one right here. This is, you know, definitely never a bad idea to test things as you go. Okay, sometimes these, uh, if you use power doors or remote control and locks, sometimes these things will arbitrarily link to other doors other than the one you want as is much the case with electricity in Fallout. Well, now, I think a good place for these generators might be, like, here. We want them out of the way along the walls. Okay, so we definitely don't want a wire straight to the door. We want to wire up. Ah, see, right there, one, one, of, the, one of our favorite electrical glitches. Oh, conduit, there we go. Okay, so, we don't want... First, we gotta, first of all, we got to think what we want, and this window is... Sorry. There we go. First, we got to think what we want. Okay, we want a separate switch for each door. Now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you, going through step by step. I'm not going to be skipping through things and then referring you to a different video. I'm going to show you how I wire it step by step. We want our my logic gate switch for this door so we can open it from either side. And then we want a switch for this shutter, a switch for these two, and a switch for, for these two. So they can open them independently, but we also want an, one overall switch. If for whatever reason I have 40 guys storming down on me, I want one switch that I can close all of them with. And then with all of them closed, then I could verify which, you know, put whichever one in, you know, the position I want, turn the power back on, and, you know, you'll see what I mean. That's what we want to do. So first we need our overall switch. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Actually, first, let's wire up this door because we, we're, we're going to want to hot wire it open so we can get through it on both sides. Because we want to put, put a switch on this door. Now, this is what I do. This is very simple. For the logic gate switch, we want an XOR logic gate. Always best to put these controls on the same side of the door that the door's conduit is on. Um, although, in this case, because that's also the side the door opens on, that's a little inconvenient. So, we're actually going to be... We're going to put the switches over here for it. Ah, we'll see. We'll, get, we'll figure it out. But I do like to put the controls on the same side as the conduit. I just think on the outside that'd be a little inconvenient to open this. And Yeah, so out here the switch will need to be here. We'll just have to, uh, we'll just have to work around that. We'll put some extra conduits. So let's get some switches out. Let's get a switch for the outside of the door. And we want a switch for the inside of the door. Yeah, let's do. Let's put both of these switches here. Now... So the first step for, for this process is we need, we need power to the switches. When I do one of my logic gate power doors, the first step is we put power to the switches. Then we put both switches to the red post on the XOR gate. Then we put the black post to the door. Voila. That's really, that's, that, that is all there is to it. So let's get power to the switches. So here's what we're going to do. Because we're working on the opposite side of the door from what I would recommend, let's go ahead and... Uh, the conduit here. Let's, I don't want the, the, the wires. They don't have to be super neat, but I would like them. You know, kind of neat. So we're actually gonna leave that there. Bring power here. Now we're gonna have to do the wires through walls glitch to get the wire from that conduit to this switch. If you don't know how to do it, it's very simple. We want to run it from this conduit to that switch. So what we want to do is we want to we need a wire. Sometimes you'll see me build a wire I don't need just to be able to do this. We already have a wire. We want to get it so that the wire is highlighted, but so our cursor is on the conduit, like that. That's how we want it. You, you want the cursor on the item that you are using the wire glitch from, but you need to have a wire selected that runs to it, just like we have. We have a wire that runs to the conduit selected, but the cursor is actually on the conduit. Hit uh, whatever button on, can, on PC, it's space, to run the wire to the switch. And then you run it just like normal, except when you do, all your electrical crap will be selected. So just hit the back button, whatever button that is for your controls, and there we go. 
So now we've got power to both switches. Now we need to run both switches to this logic gate, but of course we're going to have to do another conduit because we don't want to... We don't want wires going over the door. This is why I recommend putting everything on the same side. And actually, in light of that, let's go ahead and let's do put this over here. So we're only running one wire over there. This would be the... If you want to put the switches on the opposite side of the door conduit, the way to do it would be this. Let's go ahead and run both of these. Whoops. Go ahead and run both of these to... Oh, really? Really? Yeah, it doesn't want to. I'm going to have to glitch that. Okay, so this is where I would have to build a wire just to be able to do this. We need to... Uh... Am I out of materials? No. Then why can't I build one? There we go. Okay. So this is where we're going to want to do this. We need to run both of these switches. There we go. Just like I did with the conduit. To the power side of the conduit. We don't need you anymore. I would, I would have to do that to glitch this switch up there. But instead, I will glitch it from the the uh, logic gate side. We'll do the same thing. We'll just highlight the wire, hover our mouse over the red post, and then there we go. So now we have power to both switches. We have both switches to the red post. Now we just need to run this to here, and we are good. Now we can open and close this door from either side. Okay. There we go. Now, we want to keep in mind that we're doing one overall electrical system that has to originate from one switch. So I can use that one switch and shut everything down. But we don't need the door on that. The door can work independently. Let's leave the door on its own circuit. So here's what we're going to do. Let's lay this out. Let's say our circuit starts right here. Here's where we're going to start. This circuit starts here. Let's actually, let's do, put up a second conduit. I don't like to, you know, make it depend off where the generator is because I may want to move the generator. I always like to put a conduit near where the generator is so that I can move it anywhere I want and still run the power to, uh, to where it was. So our electrical system is going to originate from here. So this is where our electrical system originates from. One circuit we already have wired up goes straight to the door and works it. The other circuit will run to the windows. But first, we want to run it through a switch so that we have a master control. A master control simply is going to be at the top of the circuit, like right here. See, this circuit for the windows is going to originate, we're just going to say right here, this switch will control all of the windows. Now, we just need to run this wire to each of these conduits. Let's go to put up a switch for these. Let's put, uh, seems like a logical place to put it, right? Right in the center. It won't work for us. Put the switches we will need for the windows. And let's see. Yes, we do need another generator. Or rather, that is, we do need this generator that we already built. Go ahead and get this guy up here. Okay. Um, these generators kind of need to be near each other. Okay, no, they don't. Let's just let's they're they're good in the corners. But here's the thing, I want to link both of these generators since our circuit originates here. This is where the circuits branch off. This is the door circuit. This goes to the windows. Now when you're building any circuit, it's you can it's fine. Branch off as many times as you want. These are safe branches. This goes to the door and it ends. This will go around to the windows and end. Where where things get tricky is when you start connect when those if those branches ever connect with one another or if there's a second power source somewhere in there. That's where, th where things start happening because of the way the power flows. So we can put as many branches off this as we want. We only have two. I'm just letting you know. We can have as many branches as we want. This is an ideal branch. It goes off to switches, to a logic gate, dead ends at a door. This is going to go to these switches, then to the windows, dead end. We don't want to ever connect these branches. I'm saying that because, okay, so our circuit originates here at this conduit. If we run this power, like, through somewhere else then something could get power when it's not supposed to. We want to make sure all the power comes from one source. But we also like this generator here. So let's go ahead. Let's put up... Um, this is why a lot of my places have as much wiring as they do. I don't really usually make an effort to hide it because I like the wires. Um, it looks cool. I think wires look cool. Also, there's lots of ways to place the wires inside the walls, but then you kind of lose access to editing so what we're doing is we're just taking this generator and we're just running it 
down to the same circuit origin point. So this conduit is getting power from two sources, and then it has two ways to go out. So, I mean, basically, it, it, geographically, this generator is over here, but functionally, it's the same as if it were right here connected in series with this one. See what I'm saying? So now we have the power we need to run all these windows. Let's go ahead. First, we need... Here's our overall switch for the windows. Now we need... Uh, we need to get power to these switches. Let's go ahead and... So this one's going to go this way. We'll just have to have some extra conduits. I don't mind. You could do this any way you want. I'm just going to do it like this. Right? This is the best way to illustrate it. To the switch. To the conduit. To the door. And now we can operate this window with this switch. And we can use this master switch here to lock it down, which just cuts power to this. Right? Now, this is our second branch of the circuit here. But here we need to branch again. See, if I wire this window up in series with this one, if I just run this wire over here, now this window will only work if this one is on. So, we this is our... Here's our first circuit, right? Here's our second circuit, and we need to branch off here. So let's build, this is why some of this stuff gets a little complicated. This is just how we get the most control out of a security system. And this is why my security systems often have so many wires. We're just going to run, have another circuit. It does the same thing. We're just going to do the same exact kind of funky wiring with too many conduits, but it's okay. It's good to illustrate, I think. Instead of glitching wires in all kinds of crazy places. We're just going to do the same thing that we did before, and there we go. Now, this is, you know, a point in the circuit just like this. See, we have power coming in from there, power coming in from there. One branch that way, one branch this way. This branch now has its own two branches, because this is the master control for these. I think it all makes sense. And so this one's going to work the same way. These windows will now operate completely independently because they're on their own branches. And because this switch controls both of those branches that they're on, it will lock them all down. Very good. Now we just need to get this last one, which is going to mean running some wires in the other direction. That's okay. We've got... Uh, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Let's put a conduit. This actually won't take... So let's take it like... I think we can do this with one conduit, actually. Just got to remember where stuff's at. Which is why a lot of times you'll see me using the, the little lettering from the the, uh, the Wasteland Workshop. Those little letters, you know, and the decorations in the, in the, uh, the, you know, the vanilla menu. A lot of times I use those just to have like uh, single letter designations by these conduits. And this can be why this stuff can get a little out of hand sometimes. But we're running this from right here. See, this branch is off. You could say that this, this is not a branch upon a branch upon a branch. You could say that it is, but it's better to look at it like this. This wire going here is the exact same as this wire going here. See, it's still operated by this switch, but these other ones also, they still won't affect it. We're still safe doing this. We're still branching off and coming to a dead end. Just make sure every time you branch a circuit, you always want to come to a dead end. There we go. Okay, all these are open. Let's go ahead and throw in some screens, and then I guess, guys, we're about done. All right. There's lots of add-ons, lots of mods that have these kinds of... I'm, I'm just going to use fences here. There's a million things you can use. I'm just going to use Homemaker. Go to my fences section. Pull up some chain link fence. And... Or I could use the security fence. Actually, you know what? The security fence, I think, would go better with this. I know this is also available in USO, which everyone on PS4, I think, uses by now. I think this looks has more of a bunker feel to it. Not you. I think it does. So let's just kind of place this a little, uh, maybe not perfect. Mm, you know what I don't like, though? I don't like those big bars in the middle. These openings are small enough the way it is. Ah, uh, here we go. Let's use these guys. These guys are great because uh, they snap. At least, we, you know, on this particular mod I'm using, they snap. So we're going to just do that. And these are not straight. We're going to have to make these straight. But that's easy. That's done easily enough. <laughs>
Okay, so we got that, and uh, I think that's it, boys and girls. That's really all there is to it. To it. Oh no, wait. There's more. There's more. Let's say let's let's actually totally finish this place off. So we're gonna want to go to resources. Don't forget this because this makes the whole. This is like the whole point of it. It's a fast travel target. So let's put us a uh, fast travel target. So that if we see that this place is under attack, we can fast travel, land here, and we're already in the spot we need to defend. We'd also probably want to put. Let's find us a. Uh, Slap as a bed over in the corner here, just some place to rest if for whatever reason we need to. You can put some crafting benches or anything else you need in here. It's a little noisy though, but these are really, there's several mods that add very small and inconspicuous generators. Um, I don't use those. I, I probably should get one of those, like one of those little fuse box, thing, fuse box things, you know, and we could just slap it on the wall there at our little circuit point of origin here. Alright, but... That said, everything works completely independently, so we can put, we can now hit this switch to lock everything down. Of course, our door still functions because it's on a separate circuit, you know. This is how, this is the basis for all my security systems, this is how they all work. Everything's based around the logic gate doors, which using the XOR gate can be opened from either side with either switch in either position. The XOR gate simply provides power when one of these is on and one of them is off. And as one of these will always be on, and one of them will always be off, unless they're both on or both off, in which case the door is closed, you see how it works? So no matter how many times you press them, the door will always, always work. Very cool. Not my invention, by the way. I don't remember where I got it from. It's been so darn long, but it always works. So everything works. Oh, look, our screens don't... See, if your screens are, are crooked, they're going to clip through at angles. We got rid of that. It looks solid. Everything works independently. And also, as a whole, with the overall lockdown. And there's really nothing better you could ask for to defend. This is everything you need to defend this, this base right here from any amount of raiders. Any amount of raiders. You're perfectly safe in here, provided that you do not run out of ammo. Let's see how it looks from the outside now. Let's get our, our light on. Inspect it. Inspection time. Looks good. Looks like a little good little bunker. There's some uh, there's some nasty little things clipping through here and there, but considering that I just kind of threw this together, not having any idea what I was doing, it's not bad, guys. You could spend a little more time and make something really, really awesome. Oh, that's sticking through up there. That's okay. You get the gist of it. This is uh, one cool little thing. I just like to build something like this at every settlement. Now that I've unlocked Nordhagen Beach, I've built this little guy. Now I don't have to do anything here. This place will probably get attacked. These kinds of settlements that are undeveloped and, you know, just untouched are, are like real big prime targets for attack. So now if it gets attacked, I can just fast travel, be safe in this bunker, and defend it absolutely from anything. All right, guys, so I hope you found this helpful or at least entertaining. That's pretty much that's how I do my wiring, except I don't explain it as I go to myself, obviously. Why would I do that? So I, I try to explain what I was doing step by step, but that's the process that goes into it. And this looks really complicated. That's why I wanted to do this, because when I show some of these systems, they look like, oh my god, what are you doing with all those wires? It's really simple. It's just one circuit that just branches a couple times. Always make sure your branch is dead end. If these branches connect at any point, could develop problems. You could. And that's where more complicated, like, theories of how this shit works actually comes into play. But for now, that's how pretty much all of my security systems work. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe for more content that's always coming. Guys, it's been a real pleasure. My name is Dark Dally. I will catch you all next time.